Hello, everybody, and welcome to Playing With Power episode 005. I am your host, ZK, and with me is our usual suspects, Dominic and Hello. Zard. Uh, I seem to have issues with Dom's camera, so let's fix that oh, really quickly. No. I know, right? No. It worked before. Not my camera? Yeah, I know. I had Zard's working of instead. Of all the cameras, my camera's the one that fails. Oh. <laughs> let's see, hopefully this fixes it. There we go. You're right back with us. All right, they can see me. Yep. So, how are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty well, actually. Yeah. I'm surviving testing weeks. So. Ah, sure. Yeah. Uh, yep. I'm, sh I'm sure you're not alone in that. I'm sure we have lots of uh, people in school that have to deal with tests, including probably Donovan that's watching the stream right now. <laughs> and <laughs> Santa possibly. Oh, right, dude's still in school. He's finishing. I think he has, like, his final classes coming up, and then he'll be full-time on Immortal, finally. Yep. But yeah, for him. No, I've been there. Started my job when I was in the last semester of school. Hmm. <laughs> Felt good to finish, right? Yes, it really did. <laughs> actually, in my case is kind of weird because I actually, due to a weird mismatch in course, in courses and credits and such, I actually had to take just one last course in my last semester. <laughs> like I was, I was two credits short of graduating. Oh my god. Okay. Well, at least it was only two credits. It was not too bad. It's like okay, just. Just yeah, well, it was fine. I just, uh, basically, it was just an evening course. I actually applied for the job, interviewed, and got the job over the course of the semester. Hmm. Well, that's decent. Because it was the like, one course at 6 o'clock, so I had plenty of time during the day to yeah, yeah, deal with jobs. Yeah. yeah, good way to deal with it. It's, uh, I mean, I'm taking classes at, <laughs> at some place at night now, so continuous education is something we're supposed to all be doing all the time. And that's always good. To I learning. haven't been able to because COVID... Yeah, you know how hard it is to do acting lessons when COVID is happening? That's <laughs> Or dance lessons? Or like okay, you're learning how to deal with people. COVID. You're, you're not learning dance lessons, but you are just learning how to deal with COVID. Like, all the rest. That's of true. It. That, was, that was an education. Yep. Doing mm -hmm. everything online. I, I played a lot of board games online. Started playing more D&D &D yep. online. All the good things online instead of in person. But yeah. I actually didn't play much D&D &D online. I played a few role-playing game stuff, but not, not hmm. that much. Yeah. Oh, well. It works well. In any case, uh, for anyone that joined us, before the stream started, we do have a new theme song, thanks to Guzaman for making that. So we have a new theme, uh, like a, a theme in general, and then we have a theme song for 10 seconds just before the video starts, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so let me know what you guys think, and especially thank Guzaman and let him know what you think, because I think it's pretty great. Uh, besides that, I just want to thank, uh, we have a Dom and Zard who weren't available last week as Dom had some throat issues, and yeah, you got to recover, better it's recover and keep talking. Still, it's mostly recovered, like 90% recovered. Yeah, good enough. And Zard, well, yeah. is in exam land, and yeah, <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So yeah, thanks for a guest last week from Magical, Hydra, and Santa, who gave us a great perspective on what the game was, as we did have all top four players of the 1v1 tournament, so it was a, it was a fun time. Yeah, right. the match. I know, right? I'm still surprised I'm in there, but <laughs> it was a... It was a fun time uh, discussing the patch notes, discussing how we, how the different players thought it would affect the game and all that. So feel free to watch that. It should be... Actually, I forgot to upload it to YouTube. It will be on YouTube very soon. And this episode will follow shortly after. Uh, today, we will talk about Immortal, of course, what's happening. We'll talk about the tournament. And we'll go into this, the subject of build orders. So that's mostly our plan for today. Uh, to begin with, let's just talk about what's been going on in a, in the world of Immortal. So there has been a change in the schedule in the scheduling, where instead of having Pyroside chat every week, we are now the weekly talk show. So we're the only talk show that's every single week, every Monday at nine thirty p.m. EST from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Conquest is ours! Exactly. Oh, no, we have a monopoly on this particular time slot. <laughs> yeah, talking, yeah. We're missing all the EUs, but it's fine. They can watch it the day after. I don't mind. Yeah. But, but yeah, cool. Immortal does have a few different shows still. Like, uh, the main people are going to have a lot of shows. There's going to be Parasite Chat uh, the first Friday every mm -hmm. month. We have the Ruined Archive that's going to be this Friday. So the third Friday being this Friday at 3.30 EST or 12.30 PDT, or 9.30 in Europe time. Uh, and British time is one hour less than that. Let's not go there. Yeah, 8.30. Yeah. And then there's community game night uh, every fourth Friday. So we're going to be playing Jackbox or other games, maybe some StarCraft arcades or Immortal. Who knows? There's a few games we can play there. 
And every Saturday, there's still the Break the Game Weekly, where this, which the time has changed at 12 EST or 9 PST and 6 Euro time. So all fun times. I Thank think, God. Uh, yeah, you know, right? It's nice <laughs> having it. I'm so earlier. happy with every schedule. Me too. It, it makes life so much easier. Yeah. Well, for me, at least. Yeah, for you, it's just you the morning. It makes it easier for you. Yeah, no, for you, it's just the morning. It's at least I'll finish before the end of the afternoon so I can do something in the yep. evening. And Zard, yeah. I guess, similar. But Zard. Will you be participating next Break the Game Weekly? I'm really hopeful. Uh, 1v1, come on. Exam week? I think maybe. Oh, come on. It's oh, 1v1. Right. <laughs> I know. I'd like to. But we shall have to see what the testing schedule is like because Saturday is a testing day. Oh, really? So, you test on yeah. Saturday? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Oof. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, I, f I forgot yeah, about those. Yeah, so that is, this is a I want to, but I literally can't commit to it. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Hopefully when we'll have Zard. In the day is the test. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, that's why I have to find out, like, testing dates. Oh, because, you don't like, know what the day, you don't know what the time is? No, I don't yet. They, they, wow. Yeah, that's some organization or something. That's weird. Yeah. If I recall correctly, when I was in school, it was like I would know with the date and time of the test like a couple weeks in advance. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a few days in advance. He still has a few days to decide. And uh, that's true. That's yeah. true. That's not yeah. until Friday. So. Yeah. Imagine day of. Oof. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm sure they've given me stuff, but like I just have to sort through all of my buried emails in order to figure out like. Because Gmail has done a sucky job of sorting out which emails are actually relevant for me. So I have to go, like, find out what emails I've received. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, hopefully you can play. And we'll, well hopefully... I would love to play. play. I haven't played in ages. Yeah, the tournament. <laughs> well, last one you played was, like, the in November or something. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, you've been playing a lot, though, so... Yeah, it's like, it's true. I want Zard to play because I want the, the top players to play and to make the top four, like, makes you and Zard instead of me and then we want to say so yeah, i just have the highest competition for that final yeah. games especially yeah yeah uh but yeah that's it for the tournament so every saturday this way this week is 1v1 and the week after is going to be 2v2 for the qualifier for mysterious event that we have know nothing about or something of the likes <laughs> um yeah. there's been a lot of hints on discord you know yeah alp m 2022a or maybe that's not it is that the one you're talking about yeah, that's the one. Okay, yeah, we don't really know what it means, but let's hope it's something soon. Uh, but yeah, other big news coming up. We do have uh, a new game mode coming May 13th called Army Draft. Now, there haven't been any details about what this is, uh, but Zara, just before you were talking about having an idea what it is, can you... Uh... Let's see. So basically what happens is it's a 1v1 game mode where you and your opponent pick different groups of units and then you put them together in order to make a big army and then you smash them together and you do micro in order to see who wins so okay so a bit so 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 you need test map basically with another person which is kind of fun honestly yeah. I mean, it sounds like basically micro like is a tactics game yeah 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 yep. like it's a point it's a point by tactics game essentially yeah, yep. Yep. Yeah, and all micro everything. No, I really like the idea, especially since the other game mode that we yes. know is coming in. Warhammer World War Multiplayer Battle. Santa Claus is exactly right. Oh, wow. That's cool. what it makes me think of. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you just build your army and then you fight them each other. And yeah. I, I, I suppose we'll have the army value as well. And we did the math on that. Yeah, what, what, what does it get the army value again? How do you calculate that? Alloy plus double ether. Okay. Yeah, so you know oh. basically how much your army is worth against your opponents. And. If I don't, maybe you'll find equal ones, or maybe you just want to show I can beat you with like half your army value and just show off your mind. Unfortunately, micro. unlike Warhammer, you don't need to have a ruler handy, nor do you need to have a boatload of six of d sixes. Yeah, that does help. The that game just takes care of it for you. <laughs> yeah. It's also in real time. Yeah, the real time part is probably a bit hard. <laughs> and to do too. With dice. Yeah. yeah, who's gonna roll their dice faster? Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Go for it. But yeah. I find like Army Draft is probably a bit different from uh, Wave Wars, which is the other game mode that's been announced that we don't know when it's coming. But I've heard rumors on the Discord that this is coming soon with Army Draft as well. And that one compared to this is going to be all about the macro or about uh, making units and not and zero micro, right? Tom, what, what? Something like that. Yeah. It's an auto-battler type mode, I believe. Yeah. 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 Something like I think that. you have to position them. 
like, and then after that, they're left with their own devices. Yeah, basically. As far as I know, it's like direct strike from the StarCraft yep. work. That's what they said, yeah. Yeah, direct strike, Nexus. No clue what that's it. like. I've never played direct strike. Probably should. Probably interesting. It's worth a look. It's one of those things. Yeah, that's on I really, the... I really ought to. I just haven't. It's one of those things that's on my list to pick apart and figure out why it's designed the way it is. So See? we can propose on a community game night on next Friday. Oh, yeah. We can try direct strike there that. and then have an idea of what Way of Wars might look like. So. Yeah, we could try yeah. that. Fun. Yeah, no, we could have fun. That sounds like a good idea. But yeah, try yep. the X-Rack in preparation for... And then we can also do the micro tournament in StarCraft 2, which is similar-ish, I guess, to microing a lot of units with similar army value. Yeah. Yep, and I get guess. destroyed by Hydra yeah, and Magical. I guess so. I, mean, yeah. I think it's cool because it, like, separates the micro and the macro aspect yeah. into, like, two different game modes, where it's like, okay, I want to practice micro, so I'm going to go play the micro game mode. And it's like, I want to practice macro decision-making, so I'm going to go play the macro decision-making mode. So I kind of like that, like, the nice contrast between the two. Yeah. And then on top of it, you can also yeah. just go play PvE. Actually, I'm wondering if there's going to be PvE modes for that, because that could also be cool. Because we have a one PvE mode with yeah. co-op. Like, we have one PvE mode so far, so... Like oh, we have we do have mini games that are essentially oh, a similar true. idea of yeah. micro making. How do you make this fight work? Kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's a few so things to do that. Yeah. A few ways to have fun with that battle puzzle type stuff. Yeah. Now I'm looking forward to more mini games. Yes, like we have mm -hmm. seen that the like devs are working hard on everything at all times, and sometimes we don't see the results immediately because they're working on a big feature that's going to come all at once, like a bit co-op. I don't know if you guys have played it yet. <laughs> Or stealth, eventually, that's going to come at once. But uh, that one don't really have a timeline. But yeah, like they're working on a lot of stuff, and we'll just see the results yeah. eventually. It's always kind of nice because it's like big thing, and it's like simmers for a bit while we, t while we test it out and enjoy it, and then it's like big thing again. Like yeah. the joys of ongoing development. <laughs> yeah, basically. I, I can't wait for more art as well. Like we just got the Mark Mutter uh, model, and we got a few more placeholder oh, yeah. models. Oh. The Ark Mother model, I think, is actually a placeholder. Yeah, it, it really be. looks like a sentry. It does. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I it, saw the it final sentry. Auspiciously like a sentry. I got, I got told it was a high quality placeholder. So it's it is very nice. It's yeah. very pretty. Yeah. He says, I don't know if they can get away with it from a legal perspective, but it's very pretty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they didn't they didn't steal the sentry model, so there's plausible deniability. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, so, it's own thing. And you know they have wrong. favorite legal weapon, plausible deniability. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of it, they have the... Ah, uh, yes. The Bobby Prince special. Yeah. They even have, like, the, the free, uh, the thing around, the like, the bubble that appears that's basically the hallowed ground. It's very much a sentry ability on top of it. Although real sentry abilities will be Irritech, so... Ah, uh, yes. The force fields, man. Force fields will be... Force yeah. fields will be a thing, man. Yeah, oh, but they will cool. be to be yeah. to be explicit though the, the force fields will be yeah there's a cat the force fields will be uh breakable right so the, so like in yeah. starcraft 2 one of It'll the big, attack them, yeah basically. yeah because one of the big issues with starcraft 2 was the fact that you couldn't break the force fields until tier 3 or until legacy of the void so then you just had immovable stuff that just broke everything uh, yeah. wait how do you get in what's the thing that breaks it uh, ravagers, list. they have a ravager bile that's uh, an ability that just oh, breaks it. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Ravagers have me having played almost no Zerg in StarCraft 2. Yeah. And also, it's only Legacy of the Void. It's only past, okay, seven years, but still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's... Yep. Time. Time is a uh, relative. I've only really touched the games since Legacy of the Void, and even then, on and off, but I've only touched Protoss and Terran. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you could have made Zerg is just so much babysitting for creep stuff and queen stuff that I just hadn't really gone for it. Yeah, I can yeah. get that. No, I, I can, I can yeah. get that. I also think it's really satisfying to like watch the creep spread across the map and then it's knocking yeah, down your door and you're just like, yeah, so you can't leave without <laughs> without you getting collapsed on and crushed. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the satisfying part for me, just joking the map out like that. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of both. <laughs> but yeah. I'm looking forward to Aslan being able to play like that. That would be cool. Yeah, Aslan or... Well, I'm basically looking forward to all Irritech bullshit, and then Herlesh is supposed to come out at the same time, so we're just going to have so much bullshit appearing at once. Not oh, that Herlesh is bullshit. Time, well, we'll see. Okay, but Herlesh could end Herlesh, up that We way. can say Irritech is likely. Yeah. Herlesh will get... Okay, like, I was talking to Donovan the other day, 
and he pointed out that because of the centralized production structure for Herlesh, um, for Herlesh that means that they have like an extra spare, like four building hotkeys, and they need to figure out what to do with them. So, like, yeah, they just aren't used for production structures anymore. Yeah, Herlish, oh, Herlish gonna be crazy. Okay, so, oh, dude, I, I want, I'm thinking like some kind of weird alter bullshit. Oh. I mean, granted, they already, John did kind of joke about the pentagram thing. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, just build them a pentagram but, and have Exodia spun like out and like, win. Like some kind of thing where your production is based on buildings that are arranged in specific ways mm -hmm. and then become a bigger production building. I don't know. Yeah, stuff like that. There's there's a lot of shenanigans. Super excited to see what he does with that fact. So. Yeah. Okay, so, well, let's move on to the next subject of today, which is tournament results. I know Zari didn't have much time to watch the tournament at all. Uh, me and Dom, of course, we're casting on Dom stream, so watch it at twitch.tv slash Dominic Casts, and you can watch our stream. It's on a VOD right now. And yeah, yep. it was a fun tournament. It's a highlight VOD, so you can watch whenever. Yeah, perfect. Uh, only issue of the tournament, there were a bit of uh, issues with the patches. Oh, there was some developer stuff. <laughs> yeah, Dom, talk yeah, about there, it. <laughs> so the first, the first couple games, there will be a lot of stuttering. There'll be a lot of jumping. There'll be a lot of network issues. After that, it's fine. Like the, the later semifinals and the finals are fine, but the first games are just a mess. It's just how it is. So, yeah, bear with it. Yeah, uh, like the games are still good. Like the players are still playing well. The first game crashes, so we don't actually get to finish it. It was pretty equal. Yeah, it was a good game. Like we were wondering who was gonna lead up. I loved like the Drago start with going early, like the four minute frums and all that, or three thirty. I'm not sure on the timing yeah. exactly on that one. And yeah, it was a fun build. Yeah, no, it's really fun. Playing aggressive in the expansions. Yeah, exactly. No, it was a really fun build, and it's fortunate that we couldn't see the end of it. Uh, but yeah, uh, Hydraulics and Drago did take, did take out Magical and Santa 2-0. So that was a surprising result for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like Hydraulics, actually it was surprising because Hydraulics and Drago both played uh, Croft on the Wonder Games in the end. Uh, versus Magical always yeah. playing Aru. So yeah, but we can talk about this a bit after. And then in the finals, we had uh, Hydro Mixu beating Cute Little Puppy Dog and Pigeon Wrench. Pigeon Wrench, Cute Little Puppy Dog, double Aru. Uh, I think that's because those two only play Aru and don't really uh, play Croft much. They prefer yeah. to do that instead of uh, changing it up. Uh, Hydro Mixu, they mix it up a lot. Well, actually, they did mix it up. Hydro mostly stayed with Croft. Hydro was, yeah, Orzen the whole time. And Mixu no, Ajari, actually. Jump. He was Ajari oh. a lot, Hydra, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, I no, I, I remember I mentioning it. Or Ajari. Uh, no, actually, Mixu went to, uh, went to Orzu because I remember mentioning like Hydra used to go oh, always yeah. Orzu. Oh yeah. But for once, he actually went Ajari. And like, oh okay, that's cool. But yeah, Hydra Mixu win the championship against Hydraulic Drago in the finals. Uh, yeah. And we do see Arc Mothers, quite a few of them, and they're very effective. They are very effective. It's fun. It's fun to finally see them. Like I remember Coulter saying, he expects Dark Mother to be overpowered right now, overtuned. But we just haven't tried it enough, and to see yeah, really its power. Maybe it's kind of hard to like. Honestly, I. It's one of those things where it may be overtuned, but it's also tricky enough to use well that yeah, exactly. I don't know if that'll come up. Yeah, that's Granted, not that also uh, I mean, well, people as the people approach a skill cap, then broken stuff gets even more broken. Yeah, for sure. So. That's true. That's usually a hallmark of cursed design. Is something that is so much it scales so well with skill cap that balancing it is impossible. Okay, what I'm yeah. saying is just I wait think, for the chariot. That's gonna make it I overpowered. Think it's really strong. My um, my opinion on the Ark Mother is it's really strong, but I don't think that you're going to see it be broken when it's only Karoth versus Aru because of the fact that Bloodbound can one-shot them. Not true. Hmm. So. Yeah. How does that work for Zol, though? Zol doesn't have Bloodbound. Zol has uh, invisible so. Oh, yeah, right. So, not yet. Not yet. Yes, you're right. You're right. Anyway, yeah. So. Yeah, she's gonna hide stuff everywhere, and you won't know where to hit. It's like, oh yeah, just yeah. send a ball protection there, but there's nothing. There probably You'll is be something. Able to just, like, jump them with bone stalkers as well. So. Yeah, yeah there's, gonna be a few things. there's gonna be a few things that uh, everyone Thanks. can do to take care of it. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, like the thing with Arc Mother is also just it's kind of slow and unwieldy sometimes. So. Well, like, like a lot of units, that's how they get yep. their weaknesses, right? They they have trouble getting across the map because they're not as fast. And because of that, you can make them a bit stronger based on that. Say, like, Halwars are extremely powerful, but they're a bit unwieldy. They've got a speed buff recently, though, so it's not so much... They don't have eh. so much difficulty getting across the map anymore. Eh. Well, we'll see. Like, we'll see the we'll results. See. It is all, this is all just balanced stuff, though, and there's yeah, no, no balance. Sure. 
No, uh, exactly. No, that's going to change. That's going to change massively. Yeah. No, it's just like some levers you can pull, right? If unit is too strong, make it slower, and then you can't use it anymore or something. And yeah, we'll see the levers getting pulled back and forth. And right now, it's not really important because it's all about having fun. Yep. Yeah. And while, well, okay, balance levers can be pulled if you cannot test for fun <laughs> <laughs> because it's too unbalanced. Yeah, you've been, uh, you've been, uh, ha you've talked about that a bit. How did you use our. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to test crap. <laughs> and if I can't test it, then I can't validate design and I can't think about it. Like, That's true. I can't tell you any, give you any feedback on whether it's fun if it just gets bulldozed every single time. So, this no. is true. Yeah, no. there's also the point of timings and all that. So, you can't just test in unit tests because, yeah, units have their timings of uh, power spikes and then you have to test it in that power spike to make sure. <laughs> Okay. Um, I mean, that's why absolvers were useless for a while. True. They, their timing was completely out of sync with the rest of the game. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm quite happy with that uh, shadow change. It wasn't in the patch notes, but we all say, hey, they can see jump again. It was an unintended bug, and then they kept it. So. Oh, was it? I, yeah. I thought they just forgot to put it in. Oh, yeah, no, it's not, it was certainly unintended, but it's just it works out because absolvers were so underused where they could have been used, and it just meant yeah. that they had their timing back. Yeah. And honestly, the other changes they had to make them less single target, like single target melt damage, meant that no, eh, that seemed to be fine. Yeah, like sense. they have a place. They don't. They're not overtuned at this point. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it works. That makes works sense. Great. Cool, cool. So, so yeah, what we're talking about the tournament results. Um, I'm kind of curious on your perspective on the two v two teams because we see like we have R, we have Croft, we have Ajari Borzum for R for Croft, we have. Uh, Malin's all four are we've seen all four used in a 2v2 tournament in different combinations uh, do you have an opinion on why double aru hasn't been successful in general Bob um, you have an Zol idea incomplete. yeah so it's incomplete simple as that it's yeah. incomplete there's like hey, there isn't you... that much distinction between Malo and Zol that's true Mixu still uses her but that's much that's because he loves the underspine he, he loves the underspine yeah and I mean I use Zol all the time too it's just that there's no blood there yeah. Whitewood Reapers only vaguely become useful, and even then, that's just because the call got nerfed. The Bone Stalker doesn't exist yet. Stealth isn't a thing yet. So, uh, yep. the only thing Zol really has is that in mid game, like their mid game timings, you can push with Great Hunt. That'll sometimes work. And honestly, I haven't seen Great Hunt even that useful. I mean, so, I've seen it. <laughs> it killed my heart <laughs> occasionally, but it's. It, yeah. I don't know. It's It's been a great. Like, it's not used in QVA so much simply because Karath units are so freaking difficult to kill mm -hmm. that that 20 seconds of time that you have to, like, bash on the Karath army, they don't really care a ton about. Well, not just that. You don't gain a lot because there's so much yeah. melee. Yeah. First, yeah, yeah there's, it's the versus melee. cross. Yeah. yeah. With R, there's enough range. If you R, you around press them, R and you murder range. your opponent if they don't have like a pile of Zakal or something. Yeah. So yeah, and mid game, oftentimes you've gotten rid of the Zakal. Yeah, and I think yeah. any Aru push against Croft, you kind of need to get try and get a surround if you really want to win the fight. Like if mm -hmm. if you go straight versus straight, it doesn't. It usually favors the Croft more because well, yeah, they just have big yeah. buff units. Yeah, get more straight power. Yeah. yeah, and then you get the big concave like oh, oops, Croft has no chance. Yeah, so once, I think Great Hunt will be like nice when you can like yeah. Great Hunt and then you like set up Bone Stalkers or something during it. It's just... Yeah, that makes sense because that, that's not just yeah yeah because right now the it's it's kind of not great because of the fact that the vision is shared. So you go up and have your units go near their opponents, but if they're close to you at all, then they can spot you. And you're the big only real purpose I can see now is siege breaking, like taking yeah. out artillery. Well, the when I talked to the devs about it, like their whole intention was they're like, okay, when Zol presses that button, what should happen is that it's not necessarily like a giant jump on your opponent kind of ultimate. That wasn't the intended design that they had. What they want to have is they want to have a essentially an ability where you hit it and then everything on Zol's side shuffles around. And you have no idea what's going to uh, hit. That makes a lot more sense. But we don't have stealth, so all we can use it for is jumping on jumping on zone control. Yeah, yeah zone so stealth, and then I think we'll end up seeing that more, where it's like... Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, and then there's also parts like, 
So here's an example, the Lost Province uh, alternative entrance to the main base. If you have a tower there and you hit Great Hunt, well, your, uh, your bone stock can just go, oh, we'll just like walk right by the tower and directly into the main base and the enemy doesn't know anymore. <laughs> At the same time, you're attacking yeah. somewhere else and then there's like, oh, shoot, yeah. they attacked everywhere. Yeah. yeah, so it's like really hard to go out on the map too as well because, I mean, you do have vision reduction. If you are out of position, you can actually be jumped on. So therefore, you, you're kind of forced to play defensively you're, you're, you're forced to do one of a couple things you one have to be out on the map already and you have to be like attempting to force a fight already i think you can, where you're like walking at the aru army and they have to respect you even while you can't see anything or you just have to be at home because yeah. if you don't if you're not doing one of those two things well then they just set up and they jump you from multiple angles and what are you going to do about it so yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my predictions. I it's I yeah, look forward to more. No, yeah. Like yeah, having more stuff like that. But yeah, I guess it kind of explains, as you said, like why Zal wasn't used that much in two v two in general. But we don't see yeah. double Mala either. Yeah, because it's the same thing. Like at yeah. that point, you just have yeah, you, you don't have, have a ton of mass hunters and not much else. Like, I mean, I yeah. think I could see honestly. I think there's potential in double Mala that we just haven't seen exploited much. Yeah, because you'd have just infinite because spells. You are, yeah, and also because of the way that the tech tree works, you can have one player. The players specialize in different techs. So you can see one player going for air, another player going for dress sisters, or yeah. you know, and then one of them might also go for resonance. And at that point, now you just get your tech, yeah. like your full setup, faster because you're each working on different parts. Yeah, I'm really curious yeah. about the dread sisters. Like the latest patch really made a big uh, buff on them, right, Zard? And then, yep. Well, so it did a couple things. One is that, like, I, th I think Dread Sisters, like, have diminishing returns after a certain point because, like, you can only hate your opponent yeah. with so much Birthing Storm. Like, like two, maximum three of them in a fight. And then you have, like, of course, a couple of roots. So I don't think yeah. you want more than like, five. AVQ, yes. AVA, I don't know. AVA yeah, would sure. probably spread out forces. I can see four or five birthing storms doing a lot of good. And also, yeah, like, there's also pathing that's going to change to have more spread out units eventually, and that's going to yeah. change stuff a lot yeah. as well. I mean, oh, uh, uh, although now I think that on the other side, there's non diminishing returns on uh, Siege Moss, man. So that is definitely <laughs> a thing. So, yeah, Siege Moss. I guess, I guess those two things kind of balance out. Like in main fights, you're not, you have diminishing returns if you're trying to kill them in a giant fight. But if you were just trying to do Siege Moss, fam, I guess you just make a lot of Dread Sisters. So It seems like three to six Dread Sisters is a healthy amount. Yeah. You could go to 10 if you want to do Siege Moss, fam, though. Yeah, especially on two you players, right? Could, if both for, but both you're for relying. Yeah, that's true. Okay, two players is different because now you have the extra 160 yeah. supply. I mean, I've built 10 in 1v1 games and it's worked out for me, so. Mm, okay. Well, it depends on the timing, right? If you build that, you're already far ahead. Does it make a difference? It's. Uh, it all depends, right? Me, me and Magical, me and Magical's games are as, like, gruelingly trying to rip bases out of each other's hands <laughs> until one of them dies. Like... Yeah, see, that's why I want you to know 1v1 tournaments aren't. <laughs> you have to contact your school immediately and tell them, no, I'm sorry, I have an immortal tournament. And they're like, what's or immortal? Just tell, just have, like, when is the test? Because the test is like four or five in the evening. You can play the tournament and go to the test. Yeah, get eliminated first round. And the day of. It'll also be at 10 in the morning. I know I have an econ final at 7 in the morning. So like on Friday. So mm. Yeah, that yeah, means you have time to relax after. Like... That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, the test would take, what, three hours? Yeah, three, four, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, work. seven's not going to work. Well, so. hopefully it's in the afternoon. Yeah, well, yeah. even then after. Oh, yeah, sure, the games. I, I, know. Know. I would love to show up. Yeah, sure, your amount of well, entry. Well, time 10. zone, it'd be, what, 10, yeah, 10. 10, or 10 a.m. start? So from there, it's just... Yeah, it finishes at max one, at yeah. max. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, and everyone knows studying last minute doesn't work, hard, so you don't have to do it. It doesn't work. Yeah, no, no. If you don't, if you don't know the day up. You don't know. No. Like, general general rule is always like, it's useless to study the day of. Just make sure you studied before, get a good night's sleep the day before, and then you're good. Yeah, right. Don't we never? I'm sure you I, never studied the day of either, right? I Ever. Just, but, no, 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 no. I'd always it, my my focus is always making sure I was relaxed. Hmm, that's like smart. if I could relax, if I was rested, then I'd be able to recall the information and do just fine. Hmm. Smarter than I did. Hmm. <laughs> Anyway, well, 
I tended to test well. Time, time Same. to find out. I, I will find out afterward. Um, we shall see what happens. Yeah. So. But yeah. Okay. So two v two tool sets. We saw. We talked about double Aru. Uh, the one we've seen the most is usually Croft and Aru. So usually Orzu Mala, and I think that one usually, just makes yeah. sense because of the synergies. I suppose. They're both very ter territory control focused. Okay, well, um, yeah. Wait. Pret okay, well here here's the obvious synergy. Yeah. You cool. take a blood well, you stick a shard <laughs> on it, and then you have oh, an shot. Right. Yes. Blood wells oh. help your allies. Oh yep. yeah, that's really, really strong. In there, okay. You take one oh. mass hunter, and then you take a pile of magi and your sharu, and then you red tide the mass hunter and you refill all of your magi and sharu at the same time. Okay, so you have that. And then, of course, you also have Blood Grain, which means that, well, all of the spellcasters on the Karoth side of the army get refilled at the same time. And so, therefore, the amount of healing is absolutely disgusting. And on top of this, Magi end up healing masked hunters as well that are sitting there spamming offering. So you kind of have like these like four or five different facets of synergy that happen so i mean it sounds like basically mm -hmm. it's like everything saushian was at its strongest four or five times over but in case in pyre abilities yeah. so yeah. if you have map control then you essentially just have orzum saushian which is terrifying <laughs> yeah i was gonna go into that like double croft uh saushian <laughs> like uh orzum saushian Oz has won a lot of games this tournament as well and uh yeah. that's true although saushian did get nerfed but I'm Still talking pre-nerf Saushin. I'm yeah. talking when it had 90% on the damage reduction. Like, you're invincible if they jump to you. I think, yep. think Jari's one immortal just has so many abilities that are great for 2v2. Actually, both abilities are just great for 2v2s. Recalling is perfect for 2v2s. There's just more mm -hmm. chance of having bad positions. And then shields for everyone. Well, obviously, it's that scales for really well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, more, the more units, the better it scales. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh Bloodwell Arc Mother. Oh, that's... Is that gonna work though? The, the cooldown on Arc Mother is really high. Is it? Uh, for for the for the ter territory, I think it's well. I think it's like 10, 15 seconds. It's high enough that in a single fight, 10, I think it's fifteen seconds. seconds. Yeah, but fights last only effect, thirty seconds. The effect lasts for fifteen seconds. So uh, therefore, oh. oh, it's five seconds. Oh, never mind. Okay, no, they're yeah. thanks, Big Sue. That's actually yeah. that would be really scary though. How am I missing? No, but I don't think that the Arc Mother effect is five seconds. Okay. Scepter That's... blood would scepter blood rain work? That's an interesting. Scepter, one. yep. Scepter blood rain is a thing. I mean, oh, so, mana, so, yeah. yeah, so you just have a uh, yeah. So you bring the the blood walls of the scepters. <laughs> Cooldown is five seconds. Yeah. So blood. Yeah. Okay. I can see it. So you just stick the arc mother on top of a blood well, and then you just use it off cooldown. <laughs> so. Pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah, so every um, arc mother would be able to sustain. Oh, no, 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 that's that's not would be quite that fast. I don't think it because blood wells recharge what three mana a second. It's like nine mana a second, I think. That's still only forty five mana. You'd have to wait another three four seconds, so it'd be like nine seconds. Three. It would be quite off okay. cooldown. Yeah, yeah they can really often good. start with full mana as well. Oh yeah, right. I mean, the thing is, you still you're still going. Like I, I yeah, suppose three, it's worth noting. Two to three. It's still just infinite, infinite yeah. protected ground. You're not. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking the max is like three of them per That's arc. That's what makes the same. Blood well. Yeah. So, so, so. basically, Malaj. Well, actually, any arc is going to get great. Uh, like it great synergy with off. everyone, just give infinite mana to all the spellcasters. Or yeah. I mean, it's just like maybe Krav just has more spell because would it recharge charge when you're you're playing Jora? Yeah, that's a good question. I yeah, have no cause idea. Because like, the other thing I'm not sure about is what's going to happen when the Aru spellcasting system switches to blood as a mechanic rather than mana. I mean, like, is that synergy still going to exist? I mean, I think that synergy will. You want still. that synergy, right? You want the two v two to be weird and like it's more weird. If yeah, there's stuff I don't affect disagree. Each other. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's I mean, I, at this point I think it's good for the game to have it. Yep. I'm just if it's not too much sure. of a problem, then they will nerf it. Yeah, yeah, that's what but they were discussing in chat, true. right? Like just yeah. nerf it, like okay, only give fifty percent more mana to non R or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So that would so. So that would just be a direct. Or actually, maybe well, actually, hang on because it heals too, right? Yeah, it can still heal one hundred percent though. So that effect would happen, like if it was healing and mana. Aru would implicitly get more value because they can once they get to cast off HP. 
That's yes. true. Yep. That means so that if, Dread if they drop be able to get a birthing storm and a root each. Yeah. And but my point is more that the, the thing you're talking about about non Aru getting less off of it yeah, yeah, happens yeah. implicitly because they don't cast off HP. So probably yes. they'll just nerf it entirely just because it's going to yeah. be too powerful. And then just Aru gets the benefit <laughs> of what, of casting off off HP while everyone else just gets mana. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, if so, it's too much of a problem, it'll get nerfed. So. Yeah, so just malice synergy, if anything. But yeah, despite the non malice synergy, we saw like hydraulics Drago won with Croft with with, uh, with double Croft against uh, I, mean, I guess Magical we, Santa. Can't wait until Zul is done and you can do um, yeah, more crazy stuff. And you can do what are they called? Whitewood Reaper run bys with Reaper. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so looking forward to that. I mean, Mix has been doing it for a while, man. <laughs> They have. That's true. I've been sleeping on that a bit, but I haven't figured we out how to make it work for me. I mean, we also saw ZK kill like 450, 450 value of uh, of uh, Whitewood Reapers with like four Dervish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like wh Whitewood Reaper true? HP is so low. Like like they do so much damage. They're really glass cannons. It's the definition of a glass cannon. I mean, it's the they once they get stealth, it'll be different. Yeah, because sure. then it's just cast a skill shot, go invisible, and then go kill something. Yeah, you butcher them. But then Dervish still have their uh, their splash, or maybe it'll work. Well, probably not if it's invisible. Yeah, like I'm I'm actually wondering if you can hit stuff that are invisible and just like attack the ground. Probably not. That's a bit too uh, weird, I guess. I don't see why not. If they have splash, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know if ground attacking ground will be a thing. Yeah, exactly. It's mostly it's true. Yeah, it's like okay, Dervish attack the ground here. It's like okay, hopefully there's a unit here. Just swish swish the blades and nothing. Okay. Or sometimes there's blood coming out, and that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, wait, no, 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 no. Sorry. No, 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 no. Because the way hidden works, that doesn't matter. Except when it's perfect cloaking or pure cloaking, which is rare, everything's a matter of get close to it and they just become visible anyway. True. Oh, yeah. White with Reapers will have permacloak. Yeah, permacloak. Can't see it. That That's true. Yeah. Temporarily, they have the, the optimal cloak, but for the, for the yeah. most part, with things like Bone Stalkers, getting yeah. close to them causes them to reveal themselves. Yeah. Oh yeah, attacking your own unit is also the different thing, right? You can like that's what you see a lot yeah, in StarCraft yeah. too. Just move your eventually. Yeah. So. You move your marine and just yeah. attack your marine with your siege tanks and voila the widow mine explodes. If you can't see it, so Or Hellions, yeah. Hellions you do it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's gonna be an interesting factor when that comes in that at least you can shoot your own units to try and kill those Whitewood Reapers at one shotting all your all your dervish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Okay, I guess we've mostly covered up the 2v2 tool sets, uh, how the different immortals work. Actually, I, I'm, I'm still kind of curious, like the Orzu Majari, what's the synergy there? Like, we've seen it work pretty well. Is it just because Croft has a lot of strong units and just having more strong units is good for 2v2, or? Because of how ground overlap, I think. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, you can benefit off of your allies' hallowed ground, I think. Does the Jari's passive apply to the Orzu hallowed ground? It does. It does. Oh, well, and that does a lot. Yeah, you can heal yep. everywhere, it's true. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Well, that, that's an interesting synergy with Aru as well. Now I think about it, that just means you get more spells out of your spellcasters when they're standing on hallowed ground. Interesting. Oh right. Yeah, with Ajari. Yeah, that's crazy. Wait, does Ajari actually heal eight mana as well? No. HP. Yeah, so just HP. Oh right, right. Spells. Oh, so. God, yeah. Well, for Aru, yeah. 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 yeah spell from the spell from blood. Okay, it's gonna be interesting again. Yeah, and another yep. tech that's missing from uh, Zolmala that we can't wait for. Oh, yeah, that changed the game. Okay, well, final subject I wanted to go through today was uh, build orders. So, uh, Zard, give me what? Give me like a rundown of a build order. What's a build order? A specific build order or a generalized answer? Generali generalized answer. Like, like, let's say general for now, right? For let's let's assume right. people haven't played RTS, right. haven't played Star Strategy right. games. A build order. You can look at a build order in two ways, okay? The classical way you look at it is you have a list of things to build in a specific order that gets you to a certain set of units at a specific time, right? Then that, that's like the classical definition that everybody thinks of. The way I think about build orders it, at least as a person who's been creating them, is it is a list of in, of 
of varyingly optimized instructions that I have screwed around enough in order to figure out <laughs> that, that the pieces of the game fit together in that particular way. Yeah, okay. So, so like, basically, it's an optimized path to reach, let's say, a certain yeah. army composition that you'd want. And, yeah, optimized path that's also safe depending on how you do it or something. It's, like, the, the optimized path being, like, okay, how much effort goes into a particular build order? So, it's, like, it's kind of, like, two different ways. It's, like, the, you know, person observing the art versus the person who's creating it, right? They both look at it in two different ways. Mm. So if I look at a build order, I go, okay, well, how do I make take a build order and make it optimal and make it work, right? Whereas somebody who doesn't have experience doing that looks at it and goes, okay, well, this is a list of instructions that I need to follow in order to accomplish a goal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. You know, and I remember like someone was talking about like a few months ago, like maybe we won't need build orders in, the, in Immortal. Wouldn't that be great? And that was me. Oh, that was you. Oops, I thought it was someone else. Well, it, was, it was like, well, you won't need builders, but really the reason you need them is that builders are just an optimization of doing something. So an optimization yes, just have to exist. What I meant was more that, so my, what I was thinking more was in terms of the way that they work in StarCraft, because the way they work in StarCraft is almost a required rote thing. And I don't think Immortal's going to need that. I think Immortal, what Immortal has in terms of build orders is still much more Free. It's much more fluid. Like yeah. it, it's a much more reactive and responsive game. So, because the problem you, you gotta, I was getting you gotta, at, you gotta react to it one minute into the game. So. Yeah, the problem I was getting at was that in StarCraft, you often had build orders where it was like you might scout something three minutes in and go, okay, well I know what I'm doing for the next ten minutes, and yep. your opponent, like what they do, has almost no effect because you That's know true. what they're going to do and you know what you have to do to respond to it, and it takes ten minutes to get to that point. Mm -hmm. So that was more what I meant. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, it's like Magico says, right? As things get more optimized, like at some point, like at this point, our build orders go, what, to what, five, six minutes? Like Zar might maybe go to seven, eight minutes, depending on his trees or what yeah. kind of builders. But like, they, like builders at some point, they become less and less defined. Like at the 15 minute mark, okay, this time you're freestyling more or less. Uh, yeah, you have to freestyle at that point because yeah. then you guys have gutted each other in some manner that is like, non-reproducible <laughs> yeah, it's like oh yeah i lost three units no i know exactly what i'm supposed to do when i lose three units at 10 minutes in okay when you lose those three minutes okay good luck uh, getting that tree in yeah yeah and that's that's what i mean yeah. is that you lose the, you have to be careful because there's just a lot more ways to cut your opponent's feet out from under them no for yeah. sure like i know in starcraft when i play it's like okay up to like seven minutes i'm not losing a single unit and these are units i'm making yeah. And like that's that is my yeah. that is what I was talking about with build orders is yeah. just the lack of interaction relative to immortal means that there's just that more that greater sense of a fixed build order yeah. that I don't find immortal has. Yeah, and also it makes it really hard to like I, I went back to StarCraft two for the first time like six months last night. Uh, it went well for like the first five minutes. I interacted with the opponent, and bam, I was floating two thousand minerals. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh god, okay, I need to practice my build orders out of this. Starcraft. <laughs> I was like, God darn. I used to be decent Where at this game. Your muscle memory has to include building units every mm -hmm. 10 seconds. So. Yeah, and especially like I play Protoss, so you have to move your camera back so you can't build your units while attacking. So you actually have to, okay, stick back to the base and make my 10 cells. Okay, go back to macroing my stuff. It's like. Yeah. Sounds like someone forgot their war prison. <laughs> yeah, that happened too. Uh, <laughs> And then I'm like, okay, back to where it is. And, uh, well, no, it's bedtime, actually. Okay, well, that's it for tonight. tonight's gaming. Yeah. Yep, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time to play a few games now. Time for bed. But, yeah, so build orders. So the other interesting part about, uh, yeah, like like Santa says, keeping up the meta is hard. That's not what it means. <laughs> yeah, the most effective tactics available. Of no, course. it's not. No, it's not. I don't even care in terms of the acronym or backronym. I mean, just in general. Yes. What <laughs> is the meta has to do with what people think other people are going to do. Yeah. So it's not even a matter of effectiveness. It's simply a matter of expectation. Yeah, that's true. No, no. You absolute troll. A bit, yes. Santa is known for that. That's true. They are. I realize I'm falling for it. I realize I'm feeding them. <laughs> Yeah, good. and you I look like at him. like like the podcast we just did with him on Wednesday. I mean, he just had he had just had Walter drawn by himself on his head the whole time. He had a he had a lot of fun. Well, yes, yeah. of course they did. Of course they did. Yeah, well, yeah. Walter is uh, Walter. 
Yeah, upset always saying Walter is life because uh, life is Walter. <laughs> that is what Walter likes the most. <laughs> Another good definition, but there's no ma backronym in that, so it's not acceptable. <laughs> okay. So, back to build orders. How do you actually make a build orders? And let's let's differentiate a bit before we go into that. Like, there's different levels of people that start playing a game that... Do they need a build order? So, you have, like, strategy veterans, like, people that were masters or, like, Diamond in StarCraft 2 that come into this game. They probably need a build order because that's what they know. Then you have strategy casuals that were like bronze, silver, gold, and say StarCraft 2 or another RT or another strategy game. And like they know some strategy, but like not more than that. And then you have full-on casuals that have never touched a strategy game in their life. They played The Sims and that's it. Sims is a great game, but won't teach you much about strategy in the immortal. Uh, but yeah, so how would you define a build order for each of these like free categories? Like the strategy veterans, the strategy casuals, and the ca the full casuals. You want to I take do. it, Dom? Or I do, do, kind of. Yeah, go for it. Full casuals, forget about it. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Don't even think about build orders. Just mess around. Get familiar with the units. Get familiar with the buildings. You'll, if you're not trying to be super competitive, the most important thing is to find a way to just have fun with what's with the tools available. Yeah, for strategy casuals, I would recommend trying to find a way to understand why the build orders are what they are but kind of the easiest way to do that is just to get a handful of them and play around with them and just see what happens right. strategy Ooh. veterans at that point you know what to do like yeah. if you have a build order you know what it means you know why it exists or you know how to look for why it exists so just find good build orders and use them that's the only group i would say like actually find a build order and practice it because they know how to optimize it. Yeah, they, they know how to optimize it. Them. Yeah, because we're... I, I disagree a little bit here. Yeah, I was okay? expecting that. It goes hard. So when it comes to strategy veterans, yes, they may be, like, veterans in general to strategy games in particular, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that they can... that they have an inherent ability to look at a build order and then just pull the meaning out of it immediately. Like, there's some basic, there's basic systems in the game that you need to be familiar with in order to be able to look at a build order and say, okay, so I can get what's going on here. For example, like, why, like, I don't, I don't think I can hand as a call opener to a veteran strategy player who hasn't played Immortal that goes something like, Expo, Ether, Ether, Alter, and then you build the third Ether at your expansion before it's complete, and that's the optimal version of that build order. I don't think they're going to be able to tell me why you do that, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, like, for strategy veterans, I almost argue that you need to, like, give them the same thing that you give full casuals, which is saying, you know what? Go, here is your tool set, go screw around with it until it makes sense, and then try and build stuff with it, and then anal using those, you can analyze the build orders that more experienced players have built and compare them to your own in order to see what exactly the discrepancies are and why they happen specifically. You know, that kind of makes sense. Understandable? Understandable? I think, I think it might be misunderstanding, because what I meant more was that I trust a strategy veteran to take a build order and learn it and then know how to, once they get the game, build off of that. Hmm. I don't trust a strategy casual. A strategy true. casual yeah. is going to take a build order and treat that as gospel. Yeah, uh, true. But yeah, that's, yeah, that is my only contention. A full casual might do that, and they're the ones that really recommend not doing that. A strategy casual might do that, and that's why I say the more important thing is to kind of see where it works. But a strategy strategy veteran is going to take a build order, learn it, like play it a few times, and then because of playing it, they'll go, okay, well, this is how this works. This is how this part works. This part doesn't work in this situation. And then they just go, they're off to the races. They know what to do. Yeah. Okay. No, because I remember, like, whenever we had, like, a new castle coming in, like, say, Winter came in once, we had Neuro or whatever, like, a, a bunch of people just play for the first time. And yeah, they're not going to have a build order, and they don't care. And they're... Like, they're high master players, so they don't really... Like, they know how strategy games work. But at that point, it's just discovering the game, like you said. But then That's I think true. I think the, the point comes pretty quickly where they want a build order. 
or like say a full casual won't need a build order until he's at least a strategy casual like jumps into that category because before that like a full casual just wants to make units that he wants he won't care about how fast or how slowly he gets them he just wants those units well yeah. hilariously enough like oh wait frick i, I just lost I, <laughs> just... <laughs> I had a thought <laughs> i still think for strategy casuals the more important thing is to teach them like you want to make this unit so think about how you'd make that unit yeah oh. And then build a build order that way. Yeah, because sure. ultimately that's what build orders are about. You want to make something, it takes you a little while to get there because of the way tech gating works. So in order to get there, you want to do this. And if it takes a little while to get to, then you also got to make sure that you have enough to back you up in the meantime. Yeah, because I feel that's going to be the other thing, right? There's going to be strategy casuals. They're going to rush thrones. And what does that mean? Yeah. You're, going to, you're going to build fire singers in your base to stop the opponent from attacking. And that's all you're going to build fire singers until you can get the front. And that's going to be your like your build, right? It's going to be what your strategy is. I think that's not a build order. That's just, I want to get well, a front as fast well, as possible. Far from optimal, but still exists. Yeah, exactly. And that's well, I mean, fine. No, it's that's fun. Another thing. Ex Expo Ether Ether, Expo, e oh, Expo Ether Ether, Hall, Expo, or Expo Ether Ether, Hall Ether, Soul Found, or Bear of the Flame, Fire Singer, Fire Singer, probably another Expo, though at that point you're being really... You're rolling the dice, yes, but you're rolling, you're going for a throne build, so you're rolling the dice anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you need you <laughs> your Expo with Aether, and then Fire Singer's around, and then at that point, while well, you're getting the second Expo, then you're also getting Soul Foundry, and then right at Soul Foundry's done, you get Angelarium, and then right at Angelarium, you get Bear of the Crown. And then you get two thrones. See, see, you're wrong there because the first, the first building you're going to build is going to be is going to be the bear. There's going to be the, the hardened flame building. Oh, sorry, and two Angelaria, two Angelaria because you you can only build one throne out of each. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, they'll learn that. So quickly. Angelarium, bear of the crown, and while bear of the crown is building, you build a second Angelarium. And then they'll build. And then you have enough. That, that then you have will... two thrones. Yep. Yeah. That build will unfortunately roll over and die versus any. Oh yeah, no, it's it's a terrible build, but it is a build order. Attack, but you know what? The casual is going to do it anyway. Yeah. It is a build order, it's fun. and it would work against someone who doesn't who isn't thinking. Hey, maybe I should be aggressive. It'll work if someone's trying to play no rush five minutes or no rush ten minutes. They will get rolled over by five minute thrones. And I think that's the whole point of uh, being casual. Right? It's about having fun. And if you have fun yeah. building ten fire skills and seeing your opponent attacking them, be like <laughs> Empire unbroken there, and then nothing happens. Well, it's perfect for them. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would, I would look at that build and I wouldn't attack into it. I'd just go, oh, I have free reign to expand three freaking okay, times. Okay, Zart, you are not <laughs> going to play against those. Like those people yeah, are going to no, play no, against, against other people. No, 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 no one's going to play like that at, at even anywhere near your level. Hell, they're not going to play like that at my level. Exactly. <laughs> This is yeah, this is just casual. someone. I want thrones. I like the cool the cool big angel guys. I want to make the cool big sword throwing angel guys. How do I do that in five minutes? And you go, okay, you do this, and they make it in five minutes. They're playing with other people who do nothing in the first five minutes, and they get thrones, and they just go with the thrones, and they play anyone else, and they get rolled over by mass hunters that call Saparius and Tari. To be fair, in this game, I do expect more people to uh, to attack just because you know there's scouts, there's. Stuff on the map. You want to get Pyre, you're like, ooh, I want to drop a big pillar on his okay. face. Just gonna okay, real like talk. If a player is using scouts, they're above <laughs> the level where this throne rush is going to do anything to them. That's a good point. <laughs> I won't argue that. Like, they're yeah. using scouts. They are actually reconnoitering their opponent. They are oh, taking oh, into account what they're doing and responding appropriately. Yeah, that's sure. actually, uh, that's almost beyond casual level in a lot of ways. Yeah, so that's a lot of stuff to be balancing yeah, while you're trying to work out what you're building. It takes it actually isn't trivial to do properly. Yeah, it's probably yeah but you don't casual. have to do it properly. Here's the thing, though, is that the game literally hands you a free scout right in front of your face right at the beginning of yeah, the game. Yeah, but if you see... Okay, but the build... My, you into using it by, via its existence. Sure, sure, sure. Right. But you got to remember that opening... Like, the opening for this throne opening that I just threw together in five seconds... That is indistinguishable from most other openings. It's an it's an expo first opening. Like if in the two minutes you have to scout for free, you're not going to see anything suspicious because yeah. the legion is going to be popping out pretty quickly because you're trying to get Angelarum as quickly as possible. Like yeah. the unless the unless the player uses a scout in the mid game or after two or three minutes to then explain explore the rest of the expansions and see that oh hey this person's gone for a third somewhere that's harder to find, then 
the you're weird not part gonna, about the build is dude, not being units. For and that. full casuals are not going to expand. Sure, full casuals are not sure. expanding. Sure, and but you're not. But again, but if, yeah, they're not going to use the scout. About that, you know. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's using the scout after the two or three minute mark to actually double check: Are they building units? Are they building expansions? Oh, yeah, yeah. Have no clue. Are they yeah. building? What tech are they building? Like stuff like that. Trying to find information after that first after you throw the scout at your opponent the first time, and remembering to continue to do that throughout the game. That's the part that I don't think is a casual level thing to do. Yeah, that, 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 that's a veteran thing. Like that, like that's yes. like pretty hard to keep scouting your opponent over and over and having to flying teapot at some point to actually rescout. Which, like, personally, like, I, I don't do me, it enough. It's hard to do sometimes. Like, yeah, I, I don't I do it enough. Getting to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Flying teapot is a is a must at the highest levels for sure. Like you, you need to get in the base and see exactly what to do. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's gonna be cool because you can hide it with the towers. Yeah. And like, okay, go around perfectly, and it won't work. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, so what's interesting is like hmm. when you actually consider like the optimized build orders that we have too, it's just like the it's like how you can adapt them too. One thing I really appreciate about Immortal is it's like you almost have like chunks of decisions that go together and then additional chunks of decisions that you can kind of throw on top of that. Here's like one yeah. example is you have your basic expand first as Aru that goes expand, ether, ether, alter, and then what are you going to do after that? Right? So that's like yep. your, your first like chunk of four. And then you go, okay, let's say, do I want to go for tech or Zakals? Well, then I go ether, and then let's say I'm going Zakals, and I go ether, alter, neurosite, and then I go Zakals. And that's like another chunk of things that you put together in order to go for the calls after that particular mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and so interestingly enough you can just swap that out you can say oh well i want to go for hunters so i'm going to do the initial chunk and then i'm going to do something slightly different in order to get hunters i'm going to go alter and then i'm only going to stay on two ether i'm not so i'm going to go expo ether ether alter and then like six hunters and then another altar and then a neuro site and you're going to build your offering and then you're going to keep building hunters so you kind of yeah. have like a different decision yeah, no. making chunk right there no, I, I like the say, chunk, yeah. yeah or you can go, okay, i want to go for tech so then we go after that after those first couple builds with the ether and the altar you go for okay i'm gonna go god heart and i'm going to upgrade my expansion and get and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop Amber Wounds in order to get Icors early. So yep. you have like that. Or you, I'm going to drop a Bone Canopy in order to get Thrums, right? And that's like your next chunk right there. So you kind of have these yep. chunks. No, that's no, interesting because you always have, like you said, there's always the, like no matter the faction, you always have the chunks of like the triangle of, uh, of uh, strategy games where you go either for Eco, you go for Tech, or you go for Army. And you always have that chunk of like, okay, for the next chunk, I just want to build units quickly so you're going to stay in the same tech level and just build a lot out of that. And like, okay, I need to uh, go up to the next tech level. Okay, I'm going to tech up. I'm going to make sure. Or sometimes you just want equals. You take an expand and that's your chunk. But of course, that's really like, that, that, that's actually really, really uh, streamlined, very small increments instead of like your big chunks, I guess. Mm -hmm. But like every decision yeah. still comes to that. Yeah, so in comparison to StarCraft, like StarCraft's chunks are just way smaller <laughs> and more intricate to put together because they're done on a drone to drone basis. Yeah, see, that's, and that's I'm, the other thing I was kind of getting at with my comment about build orders yeah, is that true. it's no longer it's not twelve pool it's not twelve pool eleven hatch thirteen thirteen gas fifteen pool or not fifteen so, uh, yeah. fifteen layer eighteen spire. I mean, it's still then, interesting because there's some, yeah. there are a lot of stuff that are happening right now. Say like, okay, instead I'm, instead of making the full hunters, I only make six. That way, I get my extra fifty alloy to be able to do this a bit faster. And like, there are going to be those optimizations that are happening slowly but surely. And in StarCraft Two, just the chunks are like we've been the game has been out for twelve years, so uh, like it's been a longer time. Like Magico says, there are a lot of chunks still. Like, okay, you're going Stargate Tech. Yeah. You're going to have your, your, your chunks of Stargate, and when are you going to Robo afterwards, or are you going to go Twilight? It's like, you have your chunks of, I have to build four gateways at this point, or you have to build... It's like, like the chunks still exist, or just in different ways, and it's just not optimized enough, because Immortal is in its infancy, really. Well, I, again, I think the fact... I think design-wise, it is just fundamentally different. Yeah, Because, sure. again, in StarCraft, you do not interact with your opponent that much yeah. prior to the 10 or 15-minute mark. You just don't. 
Yep. Eh, well, yeah, it's true. You can, you can send scouting units and stuff, and oh yeah, I'm going to harass you with yeah, my orc. But it's like apart from yeah. maybe half a dozen marines or a, a well, handful of zealots, Starcraft two, you're, you're not doing much. The interaction at like five, six, seven, eight minutes or so in Starcraft one, you're certainly not doing anything. Anymore. You're right. My my experience is primarily brood war. Where yeah, have you not four pooled before? Brood war oh. where you roll over and die to zealots, or you don't. So. Yep. And then after that. You build up a dozen mutalisks, but that takes nine minutes, and you just are doing it nothing interaction wise the entire time. Yeah, sure. Brood War yeah. is even more intense than that for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, nah, build orders are build orders. Mm -hmm. I also think that's also a bit of um, why, like, sometimes the people who come here from StarCraft, like, it's not immediately intuitive as well, just because, like, the chunks are, like, given that everything is built out of chunks, like, it can get a little bit. Um, it's, it's non-obvious as to how to do things. I will say my favorite part of Immortal is that it's so forgiving. Like, if I forget to build my units for, like, 20 seconds, I can still build them in a big chunk and, like, okay, I can spend all my money. If I forget for one minute to build, for 20 seconds to build units in StarCraft, that 20 seconds is lost forever. Whereas in Immortal, like, You're I'm going to be a bit slower in my timings, but it won't be lost forever because, like, I, my production yeah. structure isn't, uh, yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's, it's more like, forgiving. I mean, the, the punishment is very different, and yeah. it also depends on your opponent's ability to do something about it. Oh, they forgot to make units. That means I have 20 seconds to do something. Yeah, exactly. But those timings yeah. are, are much less... Like, the thing is, in StarCraft, I forget. You don't have 20 seconds. You have the whole rest of the game to do it. In Immortal, you have 20-second timing, which is right. much more forgiving because that 20-second mm -hmm. timing, until you get your units versus rest of the game of those eight zealots you'll never get back yeah so, unless, I mean, it, unless you happen to take a really good fight and then take the army advantage back or your opponent forgets themselves i mean like the the, the point you made here is to go like okay it's depend your mistakes are is dependent on your opponent to oh, yeah, punish, sure. on, to mm -hmm. punish them, right if you get your units out 20 seconds late well what happens Turns out that your opponent, if they know what's going on, goes, oh, I just have free time to take two extra pyre camps. And then you're just down 50 pyre for that mistake. However, if your opponent isn't aware or doesn't know to capitalize like that, then you just don't get punished. So. But it's also hard to scout that, though, because, I mean, 20 seconds of no units, like, unless you know where their army is. Because you might well, think that you have that. You and don't then, get you know. a unit walking out of base, then you just keep farming camps, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah, but they could be just stockpiling the units. But yeah, but, well, like you said, no matter what, there's going to be optimizations to be done, and if you're if you're at the top level, you have to follow the optimizations. But at anything mm -hmm. below the optimal level, you can make more mistakes, and it's going to be way more forgiving, which I think is my uh, takeaway yeah. of the more that's fun. Forgivingness, yeah. man. It's uh, it's nice to forgive. Uh, on that yeah. note, we're pretty much reaching the end of our hour. Um, so yeah, hope. Uh, Hope everyone that watched it enjoyed. Uh, we're going to be back next Monday for another episode. Maybe we'll have a new patch discuss, or maybe we'll keep talking about builders and actually building our own builder from scratch. We have I do have some games from Magical, so we're going to have one view, like the first person perspective, one of our better players, and we can go through that and see exactly what he scouts, how he wants to do stuff. I think it's going to be pretty interesting to go through. And yeah, that's going to be all for mm -hmm. me. I'm ZK012. You can find me on Twitter at that, and there it links to my YouTube. Uh, with me is a Dom. I'll let you uh, sign yourself out. Yep. Dominic casts on Twitch and Twitter. And my channel is now a kind of, well, one of the channels at least, if not the main channel for the Brave the Game Weekly these days. So that's on Saturday at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern, and 5 or 6 in Europe, depending on exactly where in Europe you are. And Shadow Fury 33 on YouTube. And once the technical difficulties with Immortal start settling themselves down then i'll start posting tournament footage on youtube as well and zard google my name at zard and you'll find everything about me because i'm the only one out there yeah that's not fair in case and yeah other shout outs uh, don't forget to watch uh ruined archives tonight at, uh, no uh, friday at 3 30 est or 12 30 pst or 9 30 europe time uh, it's going to be a great lore episode with Big John. Then we'll have Big Break the Game Weekly, the 1v1 tournament, the next day on Saturday at 12 EST, with hopefully myself and Zard participating in Dom casting. And once I do get eliminated earlier this time, I'll go cast with, with, alongside Dom. Uh, and that'll be it for us. Thank you for watching. This was Playing With Power, Episode 5, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>